Welcome to the Branson Woodwind Shop. A few months ago I bought the contents of a band instrument repair shop and one of the things I got was this vibratory cleaner. I've never used one of these before so I'm going to try it and see how it works. I am repatting a clarinet right now and the keys are very tarnished so I figure that's a good instrument to experiment with. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this cleaner or if I'm going to sell it, so I'm going to try it out and see if it's worth keeping or not. This is not a sponsored video, I'm just going to tell you what I think about it. If anyone else out there has more experience, please leave a comment in the description below and tell me what you think. And also be sure to read the comments to see what other people say about this. I have always used the white buffing compound with the buffing wheel to polish keys or at least the nickel plated keys, but I will give this a try and see if it's worth keeping around. If it's not, I will sell it and somebody else probably will find it worth keeping. Before I put these in, I'm going to remove the flat springs on the six keys that have the flat springs. If these come loose and the little screw pops off or the spring pops off, it will probably be very hard to find in here. So I'm going to take those off before I put those in. I pulled the springs off so the keys are ready to go into the machine. I'm going to pick two keys at random and I'm going to buff these by hand and I'm just going to time myself as I buff these to see how long it takes. And these keys are pretty tarnished. You can, I don't know if you can see it on the video well, but there is like a chalky type substance that occurs when things are very tarnished. I'm putting these keys into the machine. I'm not going to put the customer's clarinet into here because I do not know if it will do any damage. But I have a clarinet that's uh, it's broken. I'm never going to really use it for anything other than possibly for the keys. So I'm going to put that in there. And if it does any damage, it really does not matter. And also I have two barrels I'm going to put in there. One is wood and one is plastic. I'm going to put some masking tape on here and that will help me to determine how good of a job this does. Um, I'll see the difference between where the masking tape is and where it is not. I also want to see how this does on silver plating. So I have a flute foot joint that is very tarnished and it's broken beyond repair. So I'm going to try that too and see what happens. And also I have some flute keys. I'm just going to throw those in. I also have this very tarnished tuning slide. It's raw brass. It's probably been sitting around for, I don't know, 30, 40 years unused. So I'm going to put that in there and see what happens with that. So I put all those parts in there. Now I'm going to put the lid on it. Here's the information on that. It's a CV2001 vibratory cartridge case cleaner. And I'm not even going to attempt to read the German on that. If you're interested, you can pause the video and get the information off of that. It's a little after 2 o'clock. I'm going to turn this on and see what happens. I think I'm going to take it off my bench and put it on the floor though. While the machine is going, I'm going to buff these two keys. And I'm going to time myself so that I can see how long it takes. The clarinets have 21 keys and levers on them. And I'm doing two of them, so I'm doing about 10% of the keys. And also, when you repad a clarinet, you need to buff the bodies also, or at least the metal parts on the body. So you cannot really put that in the machine. Although I did put clarinet uh, parts in there, but I'm not going to use those for... Um, I'm not going to put a customer's instrument in there when I'm experimenting, though. Okay. It took a little less than one minute to buff these two keys, so that would be about 10 minutes for the entire set of keys. I have to admit that while I was showing you these keys, I did miss a couple spots and I had to rebuff them. So probably figure a minute and a half to buff the two keys. So that's closer to 15 minutes for the entire set of keys. But these ones are heavily tarnished, so that's about as bad as they get. After I'm done, I also have to wipe off the buffing compound or the rag. And let's see how long that takes. So that was about 10 seconds. And this one should be easier. That will take about 5 seconds. So another 15 seconds to clean up these two keys. Here are the two keys that I buffed. They are shiny and they look nice. And it took about a little less than 2 minutes to do these two keys. I also have to buff the metal parts on the body. So I'm going to do that now while I'm waiting. 
It has been about an hour. In that time, I cleaned the body of the clarinet, and then I buffed all the metal parts, the posts and the rings and everything. So I got that all cleaned up, and then I recorked the, all the tenons. Now I'm going to pull the top off and see how the parts look. Here is one of the barrels. Um, it's a little bit shinier. There still is a lot of junk in the cracks. Let's pull the tape off of there. There's not really a lot of difference on that one. I'm going to put that back. Here are some keys. Let's see how they are. It did clean up some of the stuff, but there is still a lot of tarnish on there. So I probably will have to leave it in there for quite a while longer. Let's see how the tuning slide is doing. Uh, I do not see much change on the tuning slide. There's the clarinet body. Uh, doesn't look like it did any damage to the body of the clarinet. But it also looks like it did not clean up the tarnish on the keys that much. Maybe a little bit, uh, but not that much. Let's see what else we have in here. And the foot body, or the foot joint. Let's see, that is still very tarnished. It looks not much different than where the masking tape is. I'm also going to throw in a couple lightly tarnished keys. And I'm going to be able to tell these apart because these are saxophone keys. I'm going to put the lid back on and run it for another hour or so. I am back. I turned the machine on and then I went home and I was going to come back in a couple hours and turn the machine off, but I forgot. So it's actually been about 20 hours since I turned the machine on. So the keys now have about 21 hours of polishing time. Here it is, let's see what we have. Okay, this is a tuning slide. The tuning slide looks a lot better on the sides, on parts of it. Other parts, it's still very tarnished. I'm guessing what probably happened is it probably got stuck in one position in here and didn't rotate with it. So part of it got cleaned up and part didn't. But it looks like the part that is shiny is pretty good. It's not shiny enough that you could just go ahead and lacquer it like it is. You'd have to go over it with the red rouge. But it actually looks like it did work. On the, oh, look at that. This, uh, yeah, I can tell that it did get stuck in one spot because there is a line there that actually got worn down. So I think if you were going to do this, you'd probably need to rotate the items. And I'm going to pull the tape off here. Okay, where I put the tape looks almost exactly the same as where the tape is not, other than where it did get polished. So I think for larger items, you'd probably want to, every hour or so, probably flip it and turn it around and do it that way. Let's see how the keys are. This is the silver plating. Um, it actually looks pretty good. There's a spot right there, but that is not the fault of this machine. That had been silver soldered in the past and the plating was burned. There is still some tarnish around the inside that it did not get. Okay, what else do we have in here? Here's the foot joint. Again, it did it did a good job on part of it. I'm just trying to scrape that off. Yeah, it it's like the stuff caked onto there and then it did not polish under that point. Here you can see the difference right here and here where it did not get polished. These keys look mostly good. I think I'm going to have to touch up that with a buffer though because there is a little spot that's not good. Um, what else do we have here? Yeah, a few spots that could use a little work. Overall, they look pretty good. Okay, now that key looks good. This was the lightly uh, tarnished uh, saxophone key, and that one looks good. Here is the clarinet body, and the key stuck to it. Again, there's some junk that got stuck to it, which kept the rest of the key from polishing. Now, I'm wondering if that could be, maybe the media is old and it has a lot of junk in it. Uh, that could be part of the problem too. Uh, maybe it's time for new media. I am not sure on that. Now, let's see what we have here. 
Again, I think that this probably did not turn around in the machine. I think it probably just stayed in one place and then the same thing got polished. So, yeah, I think the same thing on here. Um, some parts look good, some parts don't. Let's see what else we have here. Well, there's the other saxophone key, and that that key looks good. You could put this onto a saxophone right now, and it's perfectly fine. I don't think that would need any touching up. Let's see what else is in here. Okay, the clarinet barrels. Let's take that off. The reason I put these in there, I wanted to see if it would do any damage to the wood or not, the wood or the plastic. It does not look like it did any damage. There's a crack right there. It probably was there before, but since I put it in there, it probably just started to show up. But I don't think it caused the crack being in here. But again, I would not put a customer's barrel into there without doing some experimenting first. It looks about the same where the tape was and where the tape was not. So I don't think that this did much to the plastic. After it's all done, here's what I came up with. These are the keys that are good. I do not need to do anything to them other than just screw on the flat springs on the ones that need to be done. These are the ones that I need to touch up by buffing. And most of them it's not too much, just a few spots. After I spend the time buffing and touching up these keys, it probably will be about the same amount of time using the buffer as it would using the vibratory machine. But that is for heavily tarnished keys. On lightly tarnished keys, the vibratory cleaner might be a little bit faster. On the two large parts that I put in there, there was some wear on them. This key has some wear right there and right there. So what I would suggest on the large parts is stop every hour or so and just turn the parts around and that should solve that problem. After trying out this machine, I think I'm going to stick with the buffing wheel and buffing compound. But I do think it would be good for some people if you are going to do a lot of repads. Also, if I used it more, I probably would get better at using it. But I've just used the buffing compound and buffing wheel for so many years that I'm just going to stick with the way I do it now, which I'm happy with. So I am going to sell this machine. I think that someone will get a lot of use out of it and they will enjoy it for many years. But I just do not think that it will work for me. Thank you for watching and please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.